Hello Auggies Worldwide, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This question comes uh, to us through Robert Benstead. Robert has a question about mounting his dipole. He is in an HOA community, so he would like something that's minimum visibility. He says he has a so-called large tall grass area with no trees behind his house and would have just enough area to install his Buckmaster 80 through 6 meter off center fed dipole. The only problem is the, the, the hill that's behind him. He has some existing 4x4 posts positioned around the area with bird houses attached to them. He could easily relocate them as needed to support the feed and ends of the antenna. Question is, if I would extend the 4x4s with some metal pipe, would that be strong enough to handle the weight and the wind load? That depends entirely on the foundation for each of those 4x4s. Now, one thing to notice, all of the wooden fences I've seen around most of the country, and the developers all put these in, are eight foot, usually redwood posts stuck in the ground with little concrete around the bottom to keep them from shifting. And so they're six feet high above the ground, two feet into the ground. That sounds like it ought to be wonderful, right? It isn't. They'll break right at the base. They break right at the base. So what you can do to prevent that, if you can find somebody with a long enough lathe, drill a hole through the center of it long ways, put a pipe in there, or just use pipe to hold up your birdhouses. If you put the pipe in, to some concrete base and so on that would be a lot less prone to to break. Now I'm talking about steel pipe here, okay? You can put those wherever you want. Obviously height matters for your antenna. The higher up you can get it, the better. The thing about these uh, uh, pipe is that they tend to want to become part of the antenna. So you like to keep the antenna wire about three feet away. So if you can put into the end of the pipe or bolt it to it or attach it to it with hose clamps or whatever, some two foot or three foot little extensions, and then we'll run the wire across that. That helps keep them away from those uh, pipes. Another thing that you could do, and you mentioned it here, is an NFET dipole. An NFET dipole has a box at one end, and you can mount that up under an eave. And then the one that the league sells has got a gray wire on it. So you can run that gray wire out. And it's doggone hard to see. So it becomes much less visible for uh, people who are, you know, the kind of typical people in homeowner associations who will tell you that your grass is a quarter inch too high or something like that. That's another idea. And then you only have to have one. Although if you want to really hide it, you can make it go from piece to piece. I would try to get the center of that dipole, end fed dipole or off center fed dipole, about 20 feet in the air minimum. Experimented with 20 feet and it works fine. So that should give you a couple ideas what you could do. Mount those bird houses not only at four feet above, but at eight feet above. And you know, put one at four, one at six, one at eight call them bird feeder totem poles, and, and do what you think you might like with it. So there you have it. I, I think it, it's just experiment with what works. The off-center fed dipole will work fine. So will the end-fed dipole. I have not found any real compromises with the dipoles if you feed them somewhere other than the center. A lot of people think a dipole means center fed. It doesn't. A dipole means a half wavelength piece of wire or tubing or whatever. How you feed it is a different matter. Center fed, off center fed, or end fed. So that gives you lots of opportunities to do that. Now there are some considerations if you're going to do end fed. You want your uh, coax between the box and your lightning arrester to not be too short. I'd go minimum 30 feet and so on. If there's too much, just leave it piled on the ground because nothing outside of the coax will affect what's inside the coax. And then when it gets to the lightning arrestor, you have real solid ground on that shield and it keeps anything on that shield from going inside the ham shack. 
As always, keep all ground wires of any shape or sort outside of the house, except for the one wire that runs from your station ground. I've got a copper pipe back here. Everything is grounded to with the big thick number two stranded wire going down to ground outside. Okay, that's my station ground. And then everything else that's bonded to the utility ground out there. So there you have it, something to take a look at. Why not? Give it a try. You've got lots of ways to experiment here. So Robert, good luck to you. We'll catch you down the log. 73.